Does BYU football have the most interesting schedule in all of college football this season? At least one national college football writer thinks so. We'll also talk about the potential for the Cougars to have a bounce back year after a 10 win season. All that ahead on today's edition of Locked On Cougars. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's up, my friends? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making us here on Locked On Cougars, your first listener of the day. If you're checking us out for the first time, make sure you guys subscribe to the show, rate, review, enable notifications if you're watching this on YouTube, all that. You guys know the drill at this point. Uh, We are very proud to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where, of course, the motto is your team every day. And as such, we are your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. By way of introduction, for those of you who may be checking us out for the very first time, my name is Jake. I work for the KSL Sports Zone in Salt Lake City as the executive producer of DJ and PK. But then I spend a lot of my off hours doing this podcast, talking all things BYU and absolutely love it. Because our goal here, simply stated, is to make you the smartest BYU fan in the room. All right, let's dive in today and talk a little bit about two different pieces coming out of ESPN in the last few days. And it kind of goes in line with what we've been doing, getting ready for BYU fall camp. Their first official practice will be tomorrow, Thursday. I'll be out there getting interviews, kind of getting a lay for the land, all that stuff. We'll bring that to you on the Friday edition of the podcast, just a heads up as to when you can expect full reaction to that. I may publish it as early as Thursday night if I can get it out in an orderly fashion. So stay tuned for that. But the biggest thing I think for BYU is these two different stories from ESPN lend itself to some very interesting questions about the Cougars. So let's start off with this. Uh, There is a potential, according to Bill Connolly, who is one of the foremost, uh, what what do you call it, uh, analytical uh, college football writers out there, works for ESPN now, used to work for SB Nation, I've always loved his his work. He wrote a piece about teams that he expects to regress and teams he expects to bounce back in 2022. Now, uh, as he says in this, predicting a team to quote unquote rebound after winning 10 games might seem odd. He says after the Cougars brilliant 2020 run, they managed to survive turnover and continue to play at a high level offensively, but an inexperienced defense plummeted from 21st to 79th in defensive SP plus, which is his metric that kind of determines in his mind, the best teams of the year. It says the record was also boost, boosted by four one score victories. Now their schedule gets more difficult featuring road trips to Oregon and Boise State, a Vegas battle with Notre Dame, and visits from Arkansas and Baylor. Improvement on paper might not produce improvement in the win column, but it could. Then he continues with this. The Cougars returned 16 of 17 defenders who saw at least 250 snaps. Plus, cornerback Micah Harper and linebacker Keenan Peely are back from injury. I would also add Peyton Wilgar back from injury. I believe Wilgar did get to the 250 snaps. That's probably why he didn't mention him here. It also adds that Vanderbilt cornerback J- Gabe Judy Lally also comes to Provo. If the defense improves to a top 50 level, a reminder, they went from 21st in 2020. They plummeted, went off a cliff to 79th in 2021. It says if they get back to a top 50 level, the offense could make sure the Cougars have a chance in every game. Quarterback Jaron Hall is outstanding. The receiver duo of Puka Nakua and Gunnar Romney is explosive. And Cal transfer Christopher Brooks could help mitigate the departure of running back Tyler Algier. He finishes this. This team has top 20 potential. I am seeing a lot of preseason uh, top 25s with BYU just outside the top 25, like team number 26. I think CBS Sports had that. Phil Steele in his annual preview. His power poll has BYU at 13th, but he's actually ranking BYU 26th in his uh, top 25 going into the season. Now, the interesting part about this is the projection from Bill Connolly, he has BYU running nine and three this season. What have I talked about on this podcast? Those of you who maybe new don't don't know about this, but I have said pretty much all off season long that the benchmark for success for BYU in my mind is a nine win season. Anything over that, it's gravy, especially considering the degree of difficulty for BYU schedule wise. Anything below that, probably a little bit disappointing, but. 
every season is not made the same. As he kind of adds here, he put this here, improvement on paper might not produce improvement in the win column, but it could. This could be a better team overall and have a more lackluster record. It could be a 9-3 and three after a 10-3 and three season in 2021, but the 9-3 and three team in 2022, in my opinion, could be light years better than the squad in 2021. Now, that goes in line. The schedule part of this comes uh, via Chris Lowe, who is another writer over there at ESPN covering college football. He put together a list of superlative schedules from around the country, and he awarded BYU the most interesting in the nation. He says the highlight is the October 8th game against Notre Dame in Las Vegas, followed by Arkansas at home the next week. Uh, he did add that Arkansas won Lowe's award for the toughest Power 5 schedule overall. Lowe gave a, quote, tip of the cap to BYU's travel department as BYU will travel across the country twice, once to face USF in the season opener just over a month away now, and an October 22nd game against Liberty in Virginia. Then he also adds that BYU has road games against Oregon, Stanford, and Boise State, as well as a home game against future Big 12 opponent Baylor, the home opener, on September 10th. Now, the biggest thing with the schedule, I feel like, for BYU is the way it lays out. There is both big opportunity and massive risk if you're a BYU football fan looking at this schedule. I uh, had a chance to catch up with our Locked On Ducks podcast, and uh, Spencer, who hosted Spencer McLaughlin, he asked me the question, Jake, what is the biggest issue in your mind for BYU going into that game against Oregon outside of the fact that you're playing on the road at Austin Stadium? I said my most Pressing concern is the fact that BYU has their home opener the week before that against a hard-nosed, tough Baylor team that beat BYU up a year ago. That, I think, could be a big issue for BYU making that trip to Eugene shortly after facing what might be their most physical opponent in Baylor in their home opener. So it, the other thing about this is looking at the schedule. Yes, you have uh, Wyoming and Utah State in a five-day span, and then you have some extra time off before going to Las Vegas to face Notre Dame. But then you got to turn right around and face another solid opponent in Arkansas. Sam Pittman, the head coach of the Arkansas Razorbacks, he has really transformed that Razorbacks team into a competitive bunch. Are they world beaters? Not by any metric in my mind. As we mentioned that Chris Lowe, he has uh, uh, Arkansas facing the toughest schedule in the Power Five. But the way this lays out for BYU this season is if you can pick off, you can kind of garner some magic in back-to-back weeks against Baylor and Oregon when those two games ostensibly you're 3-0 and as you come back home for back-to-back home games against Wyoming and Utah State. You could be 5-0 and in theory going into that Notre Dame game. I think picking off Notre Dame and Arkansas in back-to-back weeks at midseason is probably too much of a, 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 it's just a tough thing to consider BYU doing and try to predict that. But even at, at that juncture, if you're sitting at 6-1, and a magical season's on the table because at that point you go to Liberty, ECU, Boise State could be an interesting team by the time BYU faces them in early November. Then you finish off with Utah Tech and Stanford. BYU could find themselves in a very, very good spot. You've got to navigate those back-to-backs, the Baylor-Oregon back-to-back, and then the Notre Dame-Arkansas back-to-back. And I will also add kind of the the third back-to-back that I have just the the slightest concern about. They're not necessarily the most impressive opponents on BYU's schedule, but to face Wyoming on a Saturday and immediately turn around and host Utah State the following Thursday – that could be a tough one as well, just because of the short turnaround and Utah State uh, coming off a Mountain West Conference championship season, 10-win season a year ago. They could make for a tricky uh, slip-up for BYU potentially there. I know that losing to Utah State is not anything that BYU fans want to consider, but it is a very interesting schedule. So I am with Chris Lowe, but I really like what uh, what uh, Bill Connolly said, and I says that like, trying to rebound after winning 10 games seems odd, but we all know that BYU's defense was not good a year ago by any metric. His SP plus number, in my opinion, is maybe the best analytical number because it encompasses so many different things to spit out the number. To go from 21st in 2020 for BYU's defense and to drop, what is that, 68 places, not 68, 58 places in those SP plus numbers, that's nowhere you want to be. You get back into the top 50, and I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility for BYU's defense this year, just due to the fact that they're bringing back, as he said, 16 of their 17 defenders who saw at least 250 snaps a year ago, along with the return of Micah Harper, Keenan Peely, and then Gabe Judy Lally adding to the mix as a transfer from Vanderbilt. I would expect the BYU's defense, in theory, on paper, it should bounce back, and at a top 50 level, with the prowess that BYU's offense shows, 
I really think BYU could put together a pretty impressive season if they can manage, as I said, th those back-to-back sl slates. It just feels like there are those uh, those six games with the back-to-back -back potential of them. Just the weird way it lays out. If you can navigate that as BYU early, in, kind of midway through the season, if you're sitting at five and two, six and one at that point, who's to say you don't run the rest of the table? You're sitting at ten and two or eleven and one come the end of the season. It's it's a real possibility, folks. And I, for one, as I've said, my my uh, my benchmark for success for BYU is nine and three. But if you're ten and two, eleven and one, that's an absolutely phenomenal season. That would make BYU what uh, they were twenty one and four the past two years. You go ten and two this season. That is 31 and six over the past three seasons. There are very few teams in a three season span that have won 30 plus games in recent memory. In my mind, I know the Alabama's out there, the Clemson's that type of stuff, but the level BYU is competing at, that would be an absolutely incredible run. And it would set BYU up to have a lot of pub going into big 12 play. Now, another program out there that is getting a lot of pub, and we found out their final uh, conference slate when it comes to their final season in the West Coast Conference were the men's and women's basketball programs. Where do the big matchups lay for the men's team and also a uh, new head coach, Amber Whiting, the women's team? We'll get to that momentarily. Also coming up a little bit later on, we need to talk about, some of you reached out uh, and asked me, Jake, what are these official offers I'm seeing going out on social media? We'll, we'll answer that. We'll also get to our responses of the question of the day. Not a lot of responses today, but We'll get to those later on as well. But first, a word on our friends over at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is the fastest and the easiest way to check in on all of your betting needs. Find all of your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games right now. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball. The trade deadline uh, just came and went yesterday. NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports wagering information from live in game betting, scores, and podcasts. That they have got you covered. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about learn more, excuse me, about the action happening today. It's all courtesy of your friends at Bet Online, where the game starts. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Always appreciate you guys checking out the show. You guys make this go round. It's been a really, really fun run here. We're, I think, four or five months into our YouTube era. We're coming up, by the way, later this month. It'll be the five-year anniversary of Locked On Cougars. We've done over 1,100 episodes of this show. It's been an absolutely incredible run. Don't plan on stopping anytime soon, but you guys truly make this uh, run for us just with your support. So please continue to check out the show every single day. As, I, as I said, I want to make you guys the smartest BYU fans out there. All right. So we, I mentioned we're going to talk a little BYU basketball here. BYU on the men's and women's side of things are entering their final season in the West Coast Conference before making the jump to the Big 12. Well, yesterday, BYU learned their new uh, conference schedule where the games are going to lay out for BYU. And on the men's side of things, the Cougars will open their West Coast Conference, I guess, final run December 29th at Pacific, where they actually lost last season. You can remember that debacle there in Stockton. It's one of the games, maybe the game, that sealed BYU's fate in terms of not making the NCAA tournament. It was just an abysmal loss out there in Stockton to Pacific. So BYU will try to rid their uh, mouths of that awful taste uh, when they open up play December 29th at Pacific. Then they get Gonzaga at home in Provo early on in their West Coast Conference schedule. Typically, this comes closer to kind of halfway point of the West Coast Conference slate. But BYU is going to host perennial league champion Gonzaga January 12th, a Thursday night. And then St. Mary's, who is also one of the top dogs in the conference, seemingly jostling with BYU annually for second or third place in the conference. They will come to BYU on January 28th. So the front half of BYU's uh, conference schedule here is going to give them an opportunity to set themselves up nicely if they can pick off some wins. I think uh, picking off a win against Gonzaga may be a bridge too far for this BYU team, but you never say never. Uh, BYU also will face a road-heavy start to their slate. Uh, in their first eight games, they play five of them on the road, so that is gives them the advantage on the back half of having five of their remaining eight games. It's a 16-game conference schedule on the men's side of things at home, and the good news is the way it lays out, BYU actually has a three uh, straight home game slate uh, with St. Mary's on the 28th of January. Uh, then they will host LMU February 2nd, and then also Pacific on February 4th. Then they go on the road uh, to Pepperdine and then Gonzaga. The final matchup with the Gonzaga will be February 11th, which is a little bit of a surprise because typically the TV networks and the West Coast Conference have kind of put that game later in the season, if not the last game of the season, just because of the eyeballs it draws. But that'll be on February 11th. Then you got Santa Clara, 
a road game at St. Mary's will be your final road game of the season. And then you finish things off a week later with a home date against USF. So I actually look at the schedule here and there is opportunity for Mark Pope and his squad to make some noise when it comes to the West Coast Conference. As, as I said, you have essentially four big games on the schedule. You have the home games at January 12th to Thursday against Gonzaga. Also that home date on the 28th of January against St. Mary's. And then later on the road games, February 11th and a week later at St. Mary's. Gonzaga and St. Mary's back-to-back -back on the road. Those are the four games that are going to make or break your, your schedule. Obviously, you need to avoid those uh, soul-crushing losses, the LMUs, the uh, Pacifics, as we talked about, the one that seemingly sealed BYU's fate a year ago, the debacle of the loss at Santa Clara. Well, considering how good Santa Clara was uh, in, in the end, that's not necessarily as big of a loss, but the way that BYU lost that game was just absolutely atrocious. Couldn't get the ball inbounded, couldn't defend, letting guys go right to the rim. <laughs> Oof. Uh, some bad memories of last season, but hopefully BYU can shake that off with their revamped schedule. On the women's side of things, things are interesting here for Amber Whiting in her debut uh, season as BYU's head coach. She gets one run in the West Coast Conference before making the jump to the Big 12. And the funny thing about this is her matchups with Gonzaga, who BYU has jostled with the past, what, eight or nine years, seemingly on the men's side of things, it seems like Gonzaga is always top dog. Well, BYU women have also competed with Gonzaga atop the women's side of things with the West Coast Conference. It's an 18-game schedule for BYU, and they will start their conference slate at Gonzaga on the 17th of December, and then they will finish their conference slate with their final home game against Gonzaga on the 25th of February. So the two big games against Gonzaga bookend the entire rest of the conference slate. Now, BYU probably expected to take a little bit of a step back Back this year after winning the West Coast Conference regular season title last year. Uh, they had a phenomenal run. Many of you will recall they had the, the record crowd at the Marriott Center in that home game against Gonzaga as they closed out the regular season a year ago. It'd be fun to see that once again, but just with Shaley Gonzalez exiting the program, uh, seemingly uh, I, I don't see a lot of, what do I say, a returning uh, crew that screams to me a team that's going to make another run at the West Coast Conference title, but you never say never. That's why you got to give Amber Whiting her opportunity to kind of make her imprint on this program. It would be nice to have her daughter uh, coming into BYU this year. Speaking of Amari Whiting, who recently announced she is flipping her commitment from Oregon to BYU. It'd be nice to have her sc scoring prowess this year, but alas, it'll have to wait a year before BYU enters the Big 12 when she will join the program. So, this year, the women's team may be playing second fiddle or third fiddle to some of these other programs. Portland's been pretty good in their history, uh, as has San Diego. But Gonzaga seems uh, to be the team to beat on both the men's and women's side of things. And the opportunity for BYU is the men's side. It's not necessarily the traditional kind of midway and end of the season matchup. Whereas on the women's side of things, you start and end it against the Zags as well. So very interesting times ahead and looking forward to basketball season. It's, I think, 96 days away from today is the basketball season. I know that uh, seems crazy to think about, but it'll be here before you know it. And obviously, we'll have more on this. We still are awaiting word on the non-conference schedule for both the men's and women's side of things for BYU. Uh, the men's team seems to have their non-conference schedule come out a little bit later than the women's squad as they try to make sure they compile uh, all of the contracts, get all that signed, and then put it out there. But we already know a bunch of what the non-conference slate is going to look like. You have that... Uh, a game against Creighton, who's probably going to be a top 10 preseason team down there in Las Vegas. So there are some opportunities on paper for the BYU men's basketball program. And that West Coast Conference slate, just kind of looking it over for the first go round. Obviously, you, know, you have to kind of wait and see how the season plays out. If there's a, if there's a surprise team that pops up in the West Coast Conference, but the way things kind of lay out. I like the opportunity for BYU because they don't have like a killer back-to-back -back with Gonzaga St. Mary's. You've got time between those games to get yourself right ahead of those matchups. Hopefully you can pick off one or two of them. And obviously any win over Gonzaga would be massive for BYU in their final run in the West Coast Conference. Do I pre predict BYU to win the West Coast Conference? Probably not because they've never done it. And Gonzaga just seemingly reloads every single year with, what is it, an NBA draft prospect in three different positions. It feels like annually at minimum for uh, Mark Few and company. So BYU probably battling for a second place this year after a disappointing fifth place finish last year. Let's be let's be very frank. It was disappointing the way things went for BYU finishing in fifth place in the West Coast Conference. You want to see them bounce back and obviously continue to build towards the Big 12, but 
We all, we now know uh, how the final run in the West Coast Conference is going to lay out for BYU basketball. All right, final notes before we go on today's show coming up here in just a moment. What is an official offer that had been going out earlier this week to all these BYU football prospects? We'll make heads and tails of that for those of you who may be wondering. We'll also get to some of our responses for the question of the day yesterday and also tell you what our question of the day for today's podcast is in just a moment. Another word for real quick on our friends over at Intercap Lending. There is a reason that no lender helps more families in the state of Utah with their mortgage needs than our friends at Intercap Lending. The reason? Intercap gets deals done, my friends. They feature a quick and simple process to closing loans two weeks faster than the industry average. And although fast is great, the ultimate goal is to create a stress-free home loan process for you, the consumer. And that is what Locked On's personal loan officer at Intercap Lending, Steve Carter, has delivered to hundreds of Locked On listeners since 2018, including Locked On founder David Locke. And although Intercap uh, has been advertising with us here on Locked On Cougars for a little while now. It's not a new company. they got 44 years of experience behind them. They were founded in 1978, and they'd love nothing more than to help you guys out. They've been helping Locked On listeners since 2018, so they've got five years of experience helping our listeners as well. And also, another thing, when you mentioned that you heard the heard it here on the podcast, you mentioned Locked On Cougars or Jay Catch. Intercap Lending is going to give you a corporate rate discount. Yes, they're giving you some money back in your pocket. We all know how expensive the home loan and home buying process can be. Well, you can save a little bit of cash by mentioning Locked On Cougars and Jay Catch when you reach out to Steve Carter. Give him a call. Any questions you got, uh, no matter how uh, cursory the interest may be, he'd love nothing more than to talk to you guys. His number, his direct line, 385-800-8528. That is 385-800-8528. You will not find a more responsive loan officer. If you'd like to help out, if you'd like us to help broker that meeting between you guys, reach out. LockedOnBYU at gmail.com is the email address. We'll get you in touch with Steve and Intercap Lending and get you on your way. Once again, Steve Steve Carter's phone number, 385-800-8528. That's IntercapLending.com to learn more about them online. Intercap Lending, NMLS number 190465. Intercap Lending is an equal housing lender. Before we go on today's show, I want to remind you guys, if you have not done so already, please make sure you guys subscribe, rate, and review the show. I'm pointing on YouTube to this little button down there. It says click for more podcasts. It'll subscribe you to the channel. Enable notifications, mash that like button, uh, leave comments in the section below. Always love your guys' interaction. And before we talk about a BYU and recruiting and what an official offer entails, the question of the day yesterday actually got a, a, a compared to Monday's, it got like zero interaction, it felt like in many ways. A number of you uh, mentioned about BYU's returning experience, saying that you feel like BYU's got an opportunity to win 10 or 11 games. But the question of the day was more about former Cougars and the pros. And I asked the question, which former Cougar or Cougars are you most looking forward to seeing and who do you think could break out this year in the NFL? I've got two responses. Both of them came in via email. So thank you for emailing us. That's locked on BYU at gmail.com. Anytime you want to interact with the show, advertising inquiries, questions, comments, uh, concerns, whatever you've got, reach out anytime. That's locked on BYU at gmail.com. Again, our first one comes in from Evan and Evan says, Jake, I cannot wait to see Zach Wilson. I know there has been a lot of talk about what's been going on this off season with regards to his, uh, the, the, the Zaxby situation with Dax Milne and uh, his ex-girlfriend, Abby, uh, making the accusations on social media. He says that I look forward to seeing what Zach can do this year. He says, I feel like he really is poised to show something. He was the number two pick for a reason. The Jets believe in this young man. I believe in him too. I have got my jersey and I will be rooting on Zach this season. So there you go. Evan, thank you for weighing in. Always appreciate you uh, weighing in with your thoughts. And then our other uh, response came in, this one uh, coming in from Bill. And Bill says, Jake, I am looking forward to seeing what uh, these uh, – he, he, let me, let me let me rephrase that. He says, I am looking forward to seeing what these undrafted BYU players can do. He he mentions guys like a Matt Bushman, who has been in the NFL for a hot minute with the Las Vegas Raiders. He also mentions guys like Neil Pau, Samson Nakua. He says, I really enjoyed watching them play for BYU during their time as a Cougar. I want to see if they can make a move and earn a roster slot. He he adds that guys like Tyson Williams have made good on the bets on themselves as undrafted free agents. Of course, Tyson ended up as a starter for a short time with the Baltimore Ravens. He is now with the Indianapolis Colts. He is hoping, as he says, to see guys like a Samson Nakua, uh, uh, as he said, Neil Pau'u, 
beat the odds, essentially, and make an active roster with their team. Samson is with the Indianapolis Colts alongside Tyson Williams right now. Neil Pau is with the Buffalo Bills, and we'll be rooting them on. Now, I'd love nothing more than to see those guys really do beat the odds and become those guys that uh, the the NFL writers are like, where did this guy come from? Well, he's from BYU. He's a hard-nosed football player. Any and all success that these former Cougars have in the pros lends itself to the next crop of NFL draft talent for BYU getting extra opportunities at the pro level. I know that we don't uh, want to necessarily talk a lot about Utah, but the success that Utah's former players have had in the NFL lend itself to the next crop of guys coming out of Salt Lake City and giving them an opportunity, maybe extra opportunities, just simply due to the fact that the reputation of Utah is that it's an NFL factory. It produces players at a high level. The good news is for Kalani Sitake during his time, the players that have come out of BYU and have made it in the NFL – there's a lot of them. I think we, we mentioned, what, 23 guys yesterday that are on NFL rosters right now. Now, we won't be 23 guys who will be playing on active rosters come the start of the regular season in mid in, well, I guess it's early September. But if you have, what, 12, 13, 14 guys from BYU, that's an improvement uh, of over many, many years of during the Bronco Mendenhall tenure, what? It was a handful of guys, two, three, four guys in the NFL ranks. The ranks were starting to swell a little bit with regards to BYU and their guys in the NFL. And I, for one, look forward to seeing what they can do. So our question of the day, let me throw that out real quick right here, is I want your guys' questions. It's a Thursday tomorrow. It'll be the first day of BYU uh, training camp, but we will not have access until the afternoon. So I want you guys what questions do you have going in to training camp for me? We'll do a mailbag edition, a hashtag Twitter Thursday edition of the podcast. Reach out with your questions on social media, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Search us out. Locked on Cougars is the handle for all three of those. My Twitter handle, if you want to send that to me directly, is Jacob C. Hatch. And as I already previously mentioned multiple times, the email address, Locked on BYU at gmail.com. Fire with any and all questions. Basketball, football, nothing is out of bounds. We'd love to address those for you guys on tomorrow's show. All right, final thing before we go here is earlier this week, a number of you have been pointing out these official offers going out. And uh, you, I, I'm trying to remember who asked the question. I probably should have copied that over. I apologize. I don't remember who DM'd me about it. I said, Jake, what is this official offer business that's going out from BYU? Well, the biggest thing is, is the official word on this, the official offers are, you're actually not technically, I'm using air quotes here, allowed to recruit a, a junior athlete, a junior in high school until August 1st of their senior year. Okay. That didn't make sense. You're not able to officially recruit them until August 1st going into their senior year. That's probably the easiest way to say it. Now that is an archaic rule. We all know that BYU and all the other programs out there have just blown by this. We have BYU offering guys like Logan Fano back in the eighth grade. But on August 1st, going into their senior season, these athletes can receive what is called an official scholarship offer from this university. All offers before that are verbal and non-binding. This official offer essentially uh, makes it that BYU officially is offering you a scholarship. It's it's in writing, I guess is the easiest way to say it. it. Like I said, it's more of a formality than it is anything official. But the one thing I will note here is any of these official offers indicate to you or should indicate to you as a BYU fan who BYU is super serious about on the recruiting trail. BYU throws out a number of offers. They're quite selective in terms of their overall offer numbers each year, but there are guys they will offer and then essentially say, okay, for whatever reason, we're backing off this or the young man doesn't reciprocate the interest that BYU hope they would have in the Cougars. And that just falls off. So if you have on social media, on Instagram or on Twitter, seen these official offers going out, those are the guys, those are the athletes that BYU football is most serious about recruiting. Those are the guys, if you're trying to get a sense of, okay, who's BYU really after? Those are the dudes that BYU is locked in on, narrowed in on, and just are they're focusing on those athletes. There's a number of wide receiver prospects in that group, guys like Malachi Riley, who's a three-star prospect who's got offers from everybody, it feels like. I think USC, Notre Dame have offered this kid. BYU's in the mix for him. Uh, they have all of these offers. So if you want, as a recruiting I don't know if, if you're interested in recruiting, if you truly want to know who BYU is after right now, look at that official offers, those graphics, write down those names. And those are the players to focus on. There are other names out there that BYU has offered in the past. If they did not receive the official offer this week, it means that either uh, they did not have the interest in BYU and the Cougars backed off or BYU for whatever reason, backed off on their end in recruiting those players. So 
hopefully that clarifies some things for you guys and hopefully uh, it helps you as you try to make heads and tails of the recruiting process for BYU. They've already got 10 commits in the 2023 recruiting class. We talked about Matthew Frederick, the most recent addition, a tight end out of East High School on yesterday's edition of the show. If you want my thoughts on that, I'd recommend if you have not checked it out already, listen to yesterday's show. We'll give I'll give you my breakdown of his game and I can tell you this much. I'm very excited to see Matthew Frederick in a BYU uniform. So some good things happening for BYU recruiting, but hopefully that helps clarify a few things for you guys on that end. All right, that is going to do it for today's edition of the show. A huge thank you once again for your support of the podcast. As always, as I said, our question of the day today is what are your questions? A mailbag edition of the podcast tomorrow. Stay tuned for that. We'll answer any and all questions that come in. I'll solicit those on social media as well. We'll get to that on tomorrow's edition of the show. And thank you once again for making us your first listen of the day. Now I want to encourage you guys to get over to listen to the Locked On Big 12 podcast. It's your daily podcast Focus on all things Big 12 football, basketball, and beyond with Josh Nick neighbors. Get it free and available wherever you get your podcast. That'll do it for me. Have a great rest of your day. This has been the Locked On Cougars podcast for August 3rd, 2022. We'll catch you guys tomorrow. See ya.